William, hopefully your favorite videographer. We are here at the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Board Meeting, the agency known as DART to Dallas, Texas residents. As a service to the Dallas community, we plan to cover DART Board Meetings from gavel to gavel. Public comments are required to keep DART Board aware of issues close to the ridership that they may not get through other resources. Good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, April 24th meeting of the DART Board of Directors. It's approximately 6.37 p.m. I'm pleased to be in today's meeting. Uh, our board chair, Sue Bowman, was not able to attend today's meeting. And uh, Paul Wageman, vice chair of the board, will be chairing the meeting in her place. Uh, before we take up the agenda, I just wanted to note for the board members, uh, there was a brief report uh, put at your uh, seat here from our director of board support regarding the RTC meeting that occurred on April 19th. Gives a summary of the uh, major items which were addressed in the meeting. Uh, suffice it to say, the key issue was the ongoing discussions around the funding, uh, redevelopment of the eastern part of LBJ Freeway, Interstate 635. Uh, the cause that uh, the RTC had circled around was tabled uh, for a meeting that occurred uh, a week later, and uh, that will be the subject of our next report on the RTC uh, at our next board meeting. <coughs> With that, uh, we're going to take up uh, approval of the minutes from the April 10th board meeting. Uh, they were provided in your materials. Are there any questions or comments regarding the minutes? Seeing none, I'm please entertain a motion for its approval. So moved. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, please indicate your support for the motion by saying aye. Uh, all those like sign the motion to pass it unanimously. Agenda item number two will be a report from the Citizen Advisory Council uh, from their April 19th meeting. Hello, we are the uh, Citizen Advisory Committee. I'm Kay Schmack. And uh, my report is a little bit long this time. We ran 30 minutes over because we kind of had a uh, two-part agenda this time. At our April meeting last Thursday, John, or at our March meeting, I'm sorry, last Thursday, no, it was April, last Thursday, John Adler, the Vice President of Dark Procurement, informed the CAC about the functions of his department, including the past history of procurement in the United States, all of which were very interesting. <coughs> Among other things, the functions of the procurement department are to maximize purchasing power and provide increased savings, satisfy agency requirements as well as federal and state laws and regulations, and to ensure fair and equitable treatment and public confidence. Minority and women-owned businesses comprise 36% of procurement spending. Contracts for large items are 86.8% of spending, while small purchases make up 96% of procurement transactions. Dark resolutions set contract awards for research and development at $100,000 and for commercial products at $250,000. The procurement department is organized into three areas, design and construct, construction contracts, strategic sourcing, and administrative support and technology. A unique feature of DART's procurement department is the work they do in cost and price analysis. In that process, they study and compare business transactions outside of DART in order to reach their goal to match price with quality for maximum benefit. They also utilize cooperative purchasing wherein they share contracts with other organizations, or contractors, I'm sorry, with other organizations. The result of procurement efforts is significant savings in expenditures at the end of the year, which is then transferred into DART's general fund. An example of a substantial savings transaction is the DART procurement contracts for fuel on a seven-year basis, which enables it to be purchased at a much lower cost. The second part of our meeting concentrated on committee, collaboration, and support. We outlined the positives of DART and then the needs as we see them to be. 
positive comments for bus and rail schedules are readily available and free. Trains run frequently and on time. There is an ability to communicate with customer service by phone. The Greenville Avenue number 84 bus um, runs very successfully. Ability to text the estimated time of arrival. Website information is available quickly and easily. DART is always trying new ideas in the use of innovative technology as with Go Pass. There's 93 miles of light rail and maintenance has very high standards. Needs listed are the big issue is security. It needs to be added to buses and presently it is determined to be none by people who are riding. Officers are seen congregating in some areas and not spread throughout the system. Um, another one is suburbs require essentials, increases in routes and scheduling. For buses and the TRE, headways need to be shortened, weekend and evening schedules need to be added, and improve on time arrivals and departures. Also improve communication such as cancellation features, special events, and change of phone numbers. Add alerts to visual message boards and update information on a regular basis. Hard copies need to be made available with information about fare changes. And um, one person said the dark board needs to make faster decisions. On the subject of support, it was suggested attend other civic meetings such as city councils and COG. Get more people to buy into transit through the use of employee passes, free transit day, etc and educate the public about using DART to venture into other cities for shopping, entertainment, worship, etc. <coughs> On collaboration, work with AT&T, Verizon, Frontier Spectrum, and other systems to provide Wi-Fi use of transportation, especially in the tunnels. Work with chambers of commerce, hotel motel associations, homeowner associations, and other businesses to provide important passes. Work with UTD to provide a shuttle for students. On the implementation of ideas, Asia Rogers and Kevin Bubble will form a subcommittee for work on ways to implement the ideas expressed by the committee. In old business, CAC member Kevin Butler complimented DART on the GoLink program that operates in five zones and runs much like Uber and Lyft. Charles Gillette presented his thoughts on how the committee can investigate and organize partnership findings and ideas. In new business, Lawrence Mishat told us about public hearing sessions scheduled to inform and get a comment about DART's environmental impact statement for the Cotton Belt rail line. Phyllis Silver stated that she saw the 183 bus on homeless person shaving using a manual razor. She stated that not only was it an unsanitary act, had the person been cut, but it was also a safety hazard. Charles Gillette stated that more cameras need to be activated on all the vehicles. We adjourn the meeting at 8 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, presentation from the citizen advisory. Our next agenda item will be report from the Paratransit Accessibility Advisory Group and the uh, award of its most valuable driver. Good evening everyone, my name is Angela White. We're representing the FAG Board tonight. I'm the FAG today. Uh, we had our last meeting on April uh, 20th of last Friday. Uh, Mr. Let us open up the uh, meeting. Uh, we have a uh, welcome from uh, everyone that was present in the meeting. Uh, I want to say that for the requirement that they represented, uh, <coughs> Karen Duffy announced that she is uh, retiring from the Texas Workforce Commission. Uh, we had uh, refreshments provided for her. Uh, we had an approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, someone seconded it and 
paper approved. Um, and then we went into the most valuable uh, provider award for uh, transportation services. Um, then we had updates presented from each uh, consumer or person who was in attendance at the meeting at the time. And today we will be also presenting it the most valuable uh, writer for this board. Thank you, Ms. White, for the presentation. Prepare transit successful. Mr. Douglas, you're going to introduce the uh, honoree. Yes, sir. Good evening. I'll be presenting two awards, the first being the Pag Most Valuable Writer Award for the first quarter of 2018, representing UV Transportation as Claudia Jennings. Claudia uh, has served the Dorton Ferry Transit community since June of 2008. She made the transition to UV Transportation on January, January the 8th, 2015. She currently serves as the Executive Board Board Officer for the Amalgamated Transit Union Local 1338. Claudia is passionate about her work representing union members and consistently receiving high marks from her customers and colleagues alike. When it comes to exceptional uh, performance and unwavering dedication, Claudia leads the way. She does not just work, has received zero complaints, and does not have any accidents. She enjoys helping others and making sure they're used with that, making her one of the hardest working employees on staff. She has a great working relationship with, with management and will be the first to tell you that she truly loves to be a prepared transit operator. Claudia has three adult children, five grandchildren, and her eldest son is currently serving in the U.S. Navy. She will be receiving a lapel pin, plaque, a $200 check from DART, matched with a $200 check from Emmy Transportation. Please join me in congratulating Claudia Trump's most valuable operator.
think of that conclusion, I'm going to do that. Thank you again for the presentations. Our congratulations to Claudia and to Charles. Uh, well deserved. Them. Thank you all. Thank you both for all that you do for our our customers. Our next agenda item will be number four: public comments. I'm going to now read into the record uh, our statement regarding the uh, receipt of public comments. General public comments will be allowed at the beginning of the each star board meeting for a total of 30 minutes. And again, at the end of the meeting. wish to speak at the end of the meeting, please fill out a public speaker card and turn it into board support staff prior to the start of the meeting. Individuals who have addressed the board in the past 30 days will be recognized to speak during the public comment period at the end of the meeting. During the public comment period, board members may not interact with the speakers or other board members by asking questions or offering their own comments. Members of the public are reminded that their behavior during dark board meetings is governed by the dark board of conduct or in the dark board code of conduct for citizens, news media, and visitors. Personal attacks, impertinent or slanderous <laughs> remarks, and boisterous conduct will not be allowed. Each speaker will have three minutes to address the board. The green light on the podium will indicate when you can begin speaking. The yellow light indicates that you have one minute remaining, and the red light indicates that your time has expired. The first speaker this evening is Mr. Charles May. Following Mr. May will be Mr. Richard Sheridan. Welcome, Mr. May. Good morning, Dorn Boy, Mr. President Gary D. Thomas. Uh, uh, I would just want to speak about. Okay, the first one I want to speak about is the 488 LBJ Skillman. The 488 that supposed to pick me up on, what was the name? Across the street from McDonald's and Saturday. That 488 never showed up. It was like 50 minutes late and it supposed to came, eight, it supposed to pick me up at 823. It supposed to have LBJ Skillman at 818 and that bus was 50 minutes late and she was, when she got to the Allison Transit Center, that bus, she was just sitting there the whole entire time. The time she got there, she made miss the 916 a orange line from um, Forest Lane. And then I had to wait to 936 for the next orange line because I missed the 926 red line. And then she made miss the 583. So that's why I like, oh, what was she doing? And I just want to tell y'all do something about that. And another thing, I want y'all to think like the 574 don't run on the weekend. And I'm gonna can y'all make that make that happen any kind of possibility because it's like I used to live over there and it's be hard to get around town uh, around town and it's the, I used to have to get um, dropped off at the train station and another and it's to be hard about that and another thing can y'all can y'all um. The 560, the 566 South from downtown Garland, can y'all make that actually happen too? Cause they bus don't run on the weekends. It's always a weekday bus too. And it's like, you can't even get to, you can't, if you wanna go out to places out there, you can't even get there on the weekend. Oh, my time up. No, you got another minute. Oh, okay. And um, I was just, yeah, about that 488. Also, it just ridiculous. Like sometimes it just don't. I don't know why it don't never come on time. Cause one time I had to be some very go somewhere very important and make me was late. Cause they must would never come on time and I had to just wait another 30 minutes. So and also I just like letting y'all know. Yeah, the bus drivers do a good job. It just sometimes it just delayed time because I had to be to another location on each bus 
I mean, I'd be on another bus. Like, if I, for example, if I had to miss my train out of the way, another 20 minutes for the next train comes, so can y'all please, please, don't, can y'all please just do something about like the 574? Because if y'all could make that happen, it would be great. Thank you. Mr. May, thank you for your comments. Uh, Mr. Harold Humphrey from DART is here tonight. He'd like to visit with you about your concerns. Mr. Sheridan is next. Richard P. Sheridan. Calling him will be Phyllis Silver. Good evening. Appreciate you being here. Topic tonight is no fear increases until bus ridership increases. I believe there's a handout. In consideration of the following Dallas Morning News editorial in the three part series, what I know and what I've been told by other riders, also the position of Council Member Grayson, who to get to the cotton belt and want to start to focus on improving your, your bus system and also a conversation with Carol King on the former city council member. I strongly suggest that DART delay its planned fare increases until the bus ridership increases. Right now, from a business perspective, it looks like rider confidence in DART board's management decision may be at all time low. The fact that ridership continues to go down is a strong indication that DART is failing to adequately serve its riders. A fare increase would add insult to injury on many of its riders, plus place a heavy burden on poor riders. Excerpt DART ridership is falling and will keep falling until the focus shift, shifts to bus service against the three-part series about DART and its working for riders. Two important facts explain much about the crisis of confidence DART confronts as it drives into a 35th year population of 13 city service areas keep going up, and yet year after year the total number of riders who board as buses and trains and vans keep on going down. On Tuesday, DART made its annual disclosure to creditors, and this was written March 15th this year. Bondholders will find little to fret about, but another set of investors and taxpayers in 13 cities who have spent billions to sustain DART should look twice at dispiriting revelations about ridership. I mean, it's see July 2017 special report on how DART has failed the writers who need it most, the working poor whose commutes as far as more likely to require buses than trains. DART attracted fewer riders last year than the year before, and there's little reason to believe the issue will be any different despite the rising population and the thriving economy where jobs are plentiful. The census estimate that the DART services added more than 160,000 new residents between 2011 and 2016, the ridership across almost every mode dropped. Tuesday before updated ridership picture with 2017 numbers, Last year, DART's fleet of buses provided 32 million trips, down by more than 5 million trips in 2014, up to 14% discrete, uh, decrease. And true bus rides have been falling for years, largely because DART has aggressively rejiggered, I've seen that word before, the routes to funnel more riders onto its growing network of trains. The Tuesday report shows how little success that strategy has had. The 31, 30 uh, million light rail riders, rail rides, DART provided last year only a slight bump from the 29.5 million divides in 2014. That means the loss of bus ridership would be nearly nine times the gain that rail ridership, and that's no way to run a transit agency. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you do, do delay and get a great need today. One of the standing grace in the is, is to focus on the bus system and, and that we're working for. We've had a hard time to get to work without the connectivity. Thank you. Mr. Sheridan, thank you for your comments. Uh, next speaker is Phyllis Silver, followed by Alex Kalecki. Hello, my name is Phyllis Silver, and the topic that I'm going to address is not easy to talk about. And I would like to alert to our board members and the audience that some of what I'm going to say is a description of behavior that may be disturbing to some. And uh, this is actually what the K-Chef was referring to in uh, her report. On an outbound Route 183 bus at about 5 p.m. on a recent weekend, on the seat directly behind the bus operator, a man who appeared to be homeless shaved his mustache and beard using a non-electric shaver. He then tapped the shaver on various parts of the bus to remove the hair. Obviously, this is an inappropriate behavior on a public vehicle. It is also unsightly and unhealthy. We have young children in strollers riding the bus, and they should not be learning bad hygiene practices on the bus. I called the incident into the customer response center, and I have a reference number that I am prepared to share with this evening. On a related matter, I have seen more and more people in a deep sleep loitering at bus shelters, including at the Addison Transit Center. 
The way to increase ridership is to make the ride more pleasant. I ask that, that DART police officers randomly ride DART buses targeting the likely time and location of, of offenses. I also ask that DART police make their rounds at bus shelters, including the ones at the Aspen Transit Center. As a, humani as a humanitarian effort, perhaps DART can partner with social service organizations to provide the assistance needed for the homeless using transit facilities. Thank you. Ms. Silver, thank you for your comments tonight. Would you please visit with Mr. Humphrey as well? Thank you. Our next speaker is Alex Kalecki. Followed by Everly Bond. Reconsider raising fares before you raise them in August. Um, I also had a question um, why is someone who spoke to us through email, um, they were asking um, specifically about the, uh, the bicycles filling up handicapped sections on the train and not leaving enough room for, um, for the handicapped. I guess I just wanted to make sure that their uh, complaint was heard by DART staff. I don't know if I can speak to a DART staff member about that. Certainly. Have you concluded your remarks? Yes. Yes. Uh, this point is Michael Holbrook. Chris. I'm sorry, Marie Ben. Marie was raising her hand. Could you visit with Marie, please? Thank you. About your concern. Thank you again for coming today and sharing your comments with us. Everly Bond. Followed by Mr. William Sanders Jr. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Everly Bond. I would like to speak to you part of the, uh, the new insurance health school. I am having some, <coughs> excuse me, the serious issues with health scope. Um, I've had to change two doctors. One changed it, they just let out, I refused to, um, to accept that scope, health scope. Never heard of it, and they just didn't want to get involved with it. So in doing so, I had to go through to find another doctor. It took me three months, because every doctor is just signing that plan, they send you somewhere else. Long story short, I went to the doctor on last week, Monday, when I get there, they tell me that I am a cash patient, that uh, they will not accept the um, insurance. Why? They explained to me that from January they have seven patients that have nothing to do with me. Bills have not been paid by health scope. Therefore, they refuse to accept insurance for me. So if I could not be a cash payer, pay my credit card or whatever, they refuse to see me. So I called health scope. I talked to five different people. Ended up speaking with a gentleman by the name of Dennis. And basically, he asked me, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand that. You're taking money. I don't understand that. I've made several phone calls. I'm waiting for a supervisor to, recall, to call me back now. I don't think that's fair to me or any other employee that might have health scope that if they're not paying their bills on the front end, you can't be seeing doctors on the back end. I, I, I've asked, I, I don't know what to do, so can you please check into it? Because it's not fair to the, uh, to the employees, to their spouses, or anyone. Matter of fact, I spoke to them before coming here today, and the lady told me, she said, well, there had been a problem with the stand out bill, but we're back on track now. It, it's supposed to be 30 to 45 days. I am going to that um, from January, some of the doctors I had that we still had not been paid. They told me, well, they're in the process of being paid now. That's longer than 30 to 45 days. So if you could, please, please, thank you. Ms. Bond, thank you for coming tonight and sharing comments. If you would speak to Mr. Martin here, who's in the back here, what is the reason? Yes, sir. Thank, thank you very you. much. The next speaker is Mr. William Sanders, Jr., uh, followed by the boss, Chris.
My name is William Sanders Jr. I reside 3016 Mobile Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. My telephone number is 214-374-0496. I give you that now and I'll tell you why later on. To the chair, the executive director, to the board, to the Atlanta Transit Union, and all other officials. I'm glad our God is a second chance, and not a second chance God, but another chance, because if it was a second chance, I'd be out of here, because I would have used my second chance and I'd be gone. But he's another chance God, so therefore, I'm here again. I hope that everyone did the assignment that I gave when I was here the last time. I had two scriptures for you to go home and read. I hope that everyone read those scriptures. If not, they were Matthew 7 and 12, Luke 6 and 31. Now, I'll go ahead now and say I'm still singing the same song. And the reason I'm singing the same song is because you are not doing what we ask you to do. You're not treating the employees fairly. Now, I heard the young lady just a minute ago talk about the insurance. Now, I'm not off into that. I'm, treat, I'm talking about not treating the employees fair. There's a lot of stress and strain out there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time out for that. Now, I, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I dare not. But I come to you, I pray to my God that I would be real humble, that I would be respectful. I wanted to be all those things like Jesus Christ was when they hung him on the cross. He didn't say a mumbling word, so my Bible tells me. So what I'm saying is that I come to you with due respect, urging you to take care of these employees. See, I tell the employees that when I was in the workforce, I used to tell them when I accomplished something, I used to tell them, you are what I was. I am what you are to be. You got to keep on going. My mama used to tell me, what goes around comes around. If you don't believe it, set a teacup on the counter and turn it and watch the hammer. It goes and then it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to get on the ball. We're not doing our people right. Now, the reason I gave you my full address and phone number, I respectfully challenge anyone that wants to call me. Dark got a lot of uh, empty cars over there on, uh, I believe it's Corinth and Delhi, over there close to, close to me. Call me, pick me up, let's go out to the garages, let's go out to the transit station, let's go out and ride the buses and see what's going on out there while these people are crying like they are. Now, Sam's, we need you to wrap up maybe another 30 seconds. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Okay. Mr. Boss Christian is next, followed by Kenneth Day. Okay. Good evening. My name is the Boss Christian. I want to bring to your attention uh, some interesting things that I heard earlier uh, prior to you coming in today. Uh, you spoke of a business consistent of uh, grievances, general grievances, and uh, backfire and things like that. I might ask you first of all, sit down with the union as brother when you sit down with Joe, and, and you'll get a philosophy on the reason why it takes the reason for what it do. Now, when you was asking about the 61 days, uh, 61 being backed up, that's the reason your people are not held accountable for the decisions and the actions that they take consistent of the court employees that were wrongfully charged. But that's another that's another day or another time. Now I also want to break this consistent of the 504. I heard the young lady come in and tell you things that that are wrong with the 504 that you may well aware of. She told you it didn't work. She told you there were people out there that wasn't accepting the issue. We talked about employees. We had a young lady that came two weeks ago that was married to a police officer and she had special need kids. 
And she said, since the, since the insurance has been implemented, they have not been able to receive the, the necessary care. We got employees out there that cannot afford with the consistency and the inconsistency of the deductibles. They were not aware of the flexible spending cards that was needed to challenge these deductibles. You got employees out there on the trains on the bus that are riding that cannot afford to take the medication that they need. And you're looking at issues where it may be consistent of fatal accidents. Now, I'm holding you accountable for it because you chose to put the people in a position that chose to give you a latitude to go with the cheaper service that you implemented. You got United Healthcare, Egna, Blue Cross, Lucy, and you chose to go with the cheapest service out there. What would it take for you to get ready? Is the livelihood of the public relying on the cheapest service that you chose to provide to the employees of the company of Doy, DT? Yes. I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you, get it right, investigate, fix the problem, and take care of people to take care of you. Appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Christian. Uh, the next speaker is Ken Day, followed by Andrew Moss. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Wade, Waysman, board members, Mr. Thomas. I started my comments by asking a question. Why for the last three years we've had struggles and challenges with health care? Why? And I spoke to you about six months ago and I said to you, the employees have a few rights, not many, but we plan to hold on to the few rights that we have. I brought to you your attention a black funding a decision that has not been decided by you, the board. And we talk about a decision we spent about ten thousand dollars on. Ten thousand dollars, over sixty hours of pay for three employees. What sense does that make? When we have trial board decisions, reinstating employees, bringing them back to work eight months, a year, back pay, that's no concern. But we make a big fuss over 60 hours of pay that's owed to employees. We spent $10,000 on mutual decision, mutual arbitrator selected by both parties, and we got spoiled attitude that we don't want to accept the recommendation. In my tenure, we've had about three fact fight decisions in cases where they didn't come out in favor of employees or the union. We accepted it. Why is the art here and not want to accept the award? Finally, I say to you, the few rights that we have, one is we should have the opportunity to apply for any posted job. And jobs are being passed out, handed down without going through the proper process. It's unacceptable, nepotism, all sorts of things. Just think about, what does that do to the morale? And on 504, any doctor that goes and get his or her certification should be and is eligible to be a doctor on the plane. So if someone has an independent doctor that gets the certification, they should be eligible. We, again, we had that happen. Dark and like the doctor, they snatched them up out the way. That should not be acceptable. Employees should have that right to a doctor of their choice. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Day, for your comments. The next speaker is Andrew Moss, followed by Thomas.
Good evening. It has been 656 days today since the 7-7 terrorist attack. I cannot stress enough the undue burden this unreasonable deployment is having on police officers, fair enforcement officers, and their families. I also must inform you of the mass exodus of officers who are planning to leave the agency. In the safety and security meeting on April 10th, Chief Spiller made it sound as if the police department employees have no issue with the new deployment, including forced overtime assignments. This is not true. Officers have expressed dissatisfaction in many ways. One of the police labor organizations, TMPA, emailed Deputy Chief Walling and Chief Spiller on March 26, expressing their concerns. Why did, not, why did Spiller not mention this on April 10th? On several occasions, this board advised Chief Spiller the budget was open. All he had to do was request money and he would get it. Even after the 7-7 terrorist attack, when police officers requested rifles and other life-saving equipment, officers were advised the board had not made the money available and there was nothing left in the budget. According to Spiller's 2016 PMP, the same year as the terrorist attack, Spiller came in $255,000 under budget, resulting in him receiving a $12,834 bonus on 12-5 of 16. This means Spiller refused to spend available funds on equipment that could have saved lives because apparently his bonus was too attractive. I understand how some of you may feel and ask yourselves why is Andrew Moss coming here to speak on behalf of officers and FEOs who fear retaliation. Spiller alleged a former police officer, Susan Craig, had committed a crime. During the court proceedings, Rebecca Williams, a dark human resource analyst in a sworn affidavit, stated she took a meeting with Spiller where Spiller advised Ms. Williams that he was going to ruin Craig's career and that he wanted her convicted as a criminal for falsifying a criminal report that he had an officer who would say anything he wanted to get a conviction. Officers have been terminated for much less. This is the obvious reason officers are apprehensive taking a risk to expose issues. Where are the telestaff reports? Ms. Krause has requested on seven occasions. I will email every board member the document supporting the claims above for your review. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Ross, thank you for your comments. Uh, the next speaker is Thomas Hutchinson. Uh, my name is Thomas Hutchinson, 1911 Mark Creek, Texas. Also, the financial secretary of my insurance union. Tonight, from Captain Gary and the boy, uh, it's been a while since I had to speak. I've stayed back on insurance, and I would encourage everybody to rest week. But you hear all the complaints, and I've run into some of my own. The first thing I'd like to say is, I got a raise last year for $1,580. Insurance increase on the premium just the one out of my check raised $738.66. We also put up a $2,500 in my flexible spending account, which we did last year. Uh, as of yesterday, basically I got a deal since January. January 30th, put some money in the office, so that's about eight day. They're not paying the bills. And then, come to find out, from last year, they had added another 15% at the end of the payment. If I paid 15% at the end of the payment, which we didn't pay last year, I get no rates. I've been in 29 years. Day of my birthday. I work with dog. I expect the ways. We do a good job. It's not fair to the employees. If somebody come in, I know I was at the first meeting in this old 
that is essential to your insurance. We have a cross here. We've had that for three years. We, we fought the cabinet. I was a part of the original EPO <coughs> plan. We sit at the and negotiate at the table. The Douglas helped us put that plan in. And what happens here, there's no employee input. And I listened at the Bible of Hope too. And one of the main questions that was asked by <coughs> employee input. And the person that I could not explain not one time that they have an employee input in that program at all. This is what's going on. We sit back and just make stuff up and then charge people. Now, <coughs> the 15% is ridiculous. Gary, I'm asking y'all to take away the 15% we didn't do it last year. That's just a stick up at the end of the table. Whatever raise you gave us to take it away. We ask you to go back to the this plan and somebody said we can get out of it after December. If we can, I ask you to look forward to that. Thank you. Mr. Hutchinson, thank you for your comments and for being here tonight. We uh, have one additional speaker which will be taken up at the conclusion of uh, the board meeting. So our next agenda item is the consent agenda, which is items five through nine, which was previously considered by the committee as a whole. Uh, are there any of these five items that a uh, board member wishes to be considered? We'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing none, I'm pleased to entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda. We have, a, we have a motion for approval and a second. Any discussion? Very none, please indicate your support for the motion by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, like sign. The motion passes unanimously. That concludes the uh, action items for today's meeting. We'll be taking up public comments. <coughs> the next speaker is Sherilyn Samuel. Samuel, I do not have a completed card for you, so when you conclude your remarks, uh, would you please fill the card out? I do. You did? Okay. Thank you. Good evening, board, and especially good evening to the fantastic set, because y'all understand what these young people are trying to do. My whole thing is, and I always have been, is fairness across the board. Posting of jobs, not happening no more. We just think of people that we want to give a job to and give it to them. Well, I'm going to tell you, we're going to need a lot of jobs. And I might need a different job. Because from <coughs> the middle of May to the middle of June, I would not have a doctor. So that means no prescription for me, period, because of this insurance plan. My old primary care doctor would not give me prescriptions to ask me until I go to a new doctor. I have to go to a new doctor because my doctor did not accept the insurance. And that's not fair to any of us. So long in the past, what happened when our health fair left, there are jobs there that we could do. But now that they're just giving away. Just like Jerry Christian was a board member. How in the heck he get a job this fast and just got off the board? Jerry Reynolds was moved from bus dispatch, they filled that position where they're going to give them the rail dispatch job. That's not fair to us. Because I, I can do the job. Okay? Another thing that they're doing, they're trying to kill us off, make us lie. All of us do not have sleep at We do not have sleep at We work different types of shifts and stuff, but when we go to get our physical, they make us do a sleep study. This is all game. You stretch my back, I stretch your back. But let me tell you, my doctor that they sent me to would come back and tell me, oh, you just got me a little bit. What the heck is a little bit of sleep at? <laughs> so now, they want me to wear this mask, I can't even go in my bathroom and close the door. So you know I can't wear no mask. Then they say, 
say, Dort said, you got to do the CPAP. There are other treatments that we can have. So what is the whole game plan? Your citizen advisory committee, when I look at them, does not reflect your employees, does not reflect the all the riders. What's up with that? Come on, y'all. The Fantastic Seven, keep up the good work. Thank you, Ms. Samuel, for your comments. Uh, that completes the agenda for this evening's meeting. Uh, 7 28 p.m. in our meeting is. Ms. William, also like your favorite video. We love comments. If you don't like the way Darius handles some things, lay it out for everyone to see. If you like the way you just did it, if you like to see more videos like this one, tell us. We love it when you call. Better yet, like or follow us on Facebook. Or subscribe to us on YouTube and get instant notices of all our videos the moment they are posted.